bullet time is a uh, stylistic uh, way of showing that you're in a constructed reality and that time and space are not the same as, you know, here, us today living our lives. It's slowing down time to such an extent that you really see everything around you as clearly as you possibly could. Bullet time is something that was conceived for the Matrix specifically, uh, but I think it's the byproduct of the directors observing uh, the controls coming into place, and then they ask the right question at the right time. You always know that you're doing something that is uh, groundbreaking. If someone asks something that you go, uh, maybe, maybe, if we do some development and get the right minds working on it, and it takes some pretty heavy thinking to get it together. Everything begins with a simulation. All the computer simulation information is the basis of a uh, timing uh, sequence. Each camera has a specific moment in time to fire a frame of film. All that is uh, taking into account the net effect, the total effect of the move. That is a camera coming up to speed, moving at a speed, and coming uh, uh, off a of speed. In this particular rig, there are 120 cameras and two motion picture cameras set up. The rig that we've made can be configured into any uh, shape that you want. The shapes are, are basically what uh, we compose in our simulations. It can do uh, S-curves, it can do arcs, it can do spirals, it can do anything you want. It's a, an erector set. The heights of the cameras, where they're pointing at also from the same simulation. Uh, in the middle of that box right there is a, um, a, a motion control uh, laser pointing system that uh, takes a, uh, an animation file and uh, creates a point on the surface of that cube that tells us where to point the camera. The two motion picture cameras are going to be in this particular shot running. That's, that's running at 150. That one's running at 120. There are other bullet times where the end camera is a photosonics camera, so, so we'll be uh, running that at 360. I can uh, choose at will any elapsed real world time uh, to photograph. That is, if I have a guy falling over, I can choose to capture the whole event in the time that it takes to go around the circle. I could choose to capture only a very brief moment. And that is how we determine what frame rate uh, the cameras eventually uh, wind up. I could shoot the same exact stunt several times over creating a simulation of 100 frames per second, 500 frames a second, 2,000 frames a second, all with the same camera move, moving at the same speed and time. I can go forwards in motion with the camera and forwards in time with the event, but then I could also choose to stop the camera abruptly, start moving backwards against itself while the action continues to move forward. I can, I can shoot uh, the move coming from both sides at the same time, crisscrossing over and ending. I can shoot waves you know, cycles of, of film that crisscross like waves over the middle. There is a very heavy digital half to this capture. Um, not every frame uh, that a camera captures is the only frames that will be seen. There's a, uh, a lot of uh, a process we call interpolation, which is the uh, creation of frames digitally that are the byproduct of real frames. That is, we analyze what real frames we have and we can create uh, new frames of moments in between the captured frames uh, to make moves uh, longer and or, or stretch them out or do time compression effects. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of work going on uh, in the, the art form of interpolation and uh, I just, it, needs, it needs to be said because it's not what you see is what you get. It's all baby steps towards something much larger that won't be really commonplace for a few years, but there, there are people around the world that sort of, uh, you know, scratching their heads. 
about a new way to photograph things. And uh, it'll be fairly, uh, it'll be as uh, revolutionary as uh, when cameras came off sticks and went to a crane. When they came off of cranes and went to steady cams. We're talking about cameras that are now broken from the subject matter that are virtual. So that's the next phase. That's what computers have introduced into cinematography.